Hello, it's a busy webinar with Dave Meyer. Glad to have you here today. We're going to talk about working in video, how to set up a library, and how to make video work for you today. Would uh, love to bring you through a few small things as I do that. I'm just going to uh, give you a brief tutorial for the folks that are signed on. If you have not, or if you're watching this in the future, hello future people, um, would love to have you post questions by sending us in an email to sales at busyweb.com or if you're here live your option and your chance to get into ask questions is to simply go to the Google Hangout and I'm going to go to Google Plus and show you how to get there so if you go to google.com slash plus busyweb so if I go to google.com plus busyweb you'll get to the live hangout and from inside of there, you'll see this little video right here. And note that it says Q&A and live. So I'm going to click on this button. It's going to open up the Hangout in a new window. And I'll have a little bit of echo here while it waits. To the Google Hangout. There it is. See? And, I'm going. and um, then you can ask a question by simply clicking the Ask New Question button. I'm going to do that here, as I do every week. But it's typing, ask us a question. So if you would be so kind, go ahead and ask questions during the, during the event. If you're browsing around on the BusyWeb page, because you've gotten to us by going to the BusyWeb.com homepage and then scrolling down to the Busy Webinar page for today, you will see that there is another link inside of here. I need to refresh that page you'll see that there's the embedded video in here and so that's what's going on so you can view that inside of here and you can ask those questions if you'd like to join us live on the hangout to ask questions and get your questions answered after the call if you have other issues um, tech support issues or just general questions and answers the way to do that is to click on this Google hangout link to get right in you do have to have a Google Plus account but you have to have a Google Plus account of some sort or a Google account of some sort to ask us any questions again on this Q&A tool so get get cozy with Google and uh, we'll help you out very soon so again as a reminder as you're going through the event today go ahead and ask us a question if you'd like to hear more we have a bunch of viewers online now so thank you very much for the folks that are on and let's get back to our programming alright so today on our busy webinar of course we'll go through a little bit about us but then we're going to go straight into video basics, how to build a library, embedding videos in your site, and other minor details on kind of how to do video. Now this is going to be a high level overview on all things video. We're going to dig deeper in early 2015 into each individual part of video production and we're actually going to include some of our trusted partners. Um, BusyWeb is, is lucky to have a number of web or a, a number of video development companies that have been clients and partners in the past so you'll get a lot more of that coming up but for now this is a high level and intended to get you rolling on this worldwide web of video alright so busy web is an online marketing agency that focuses on WordPress powered web design and all aspects of online marketing so when we build your website, we build it as the foundation for everything else that you do. When you publish to a busy web powered website, that simple act of publishing also posts all of your content on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, um, LinkedIn, Pinterest, what have you. So if you want to market smarter instead of harder and bridge out as much content as humanly possible on your website, talk to BusyWeb today because we can help you. We also have um, fantastic hosting where we take care of your website for you. Again, if you're a WordPress company or if you use WordPress on your website, we're the folks for you. And then we also do a number of online marketing programs designed to help you engage, inform, capture, and convert your clients or your visitors into customers and clients. So talk to us again about that as soon as possible. If you have questions or issues, we actually do have a special um, going on right now. If you book a program with us this year before December 15th, we do have a 10% discount for folks if we can start that project 
um, in about a month because we are completely booked up right now. It's a wonderful thing to have happen, but um, we're trying to balance out our load, and so um, our crazy busyness is your gain. Let's get right into what we can do with things and go into video basics. So, if you've not yet played around with video, you're in for a lot of fun, but there are a lot of things that you have to kind of know in order to do video well. Video is one of those things that it makes it very apparent very quickly if you have no experience in the, in the creation of video, if you don't edit your videos, if you don't shoot them correctly, and if you don't use the proper techniques, it can be more harm than good. That said, having video on your website or in your social media is one of the distinguishing characteristics of companies that really get online marketing and that are really getting results in online marketing. So if you haven't yet tried video, you know, you're just gr you're just the grab grabbing of your iPhone away from having something that you can use to engage and inform your clients. So First, let's talk about what is video worthy. If you have something that you need to convey that's a complex set of topics or something that you can tell via you know, a bunch of pictures or a bunch of moving video um, items in a row, that would be probably one of the quickest and easiest ways to convey that information. If you have something that would need to be broken into several blog posts, or an item that just is a little bit hard to explain, you need to show and tell, that would be a great um, candidate for online video. Things that have action, things that tell complex stories are fantastic for this. If you need to personalize who you are and what you do, say for example if you are a professional or if you're a doctor, that's one of the best ways to reach out and connect with people. People want to know the actual people that they're talking to or that they'll be working with. So if you want to personalize yourself and the service that you bring to your clients, video is a great way to do that. It's also a very fast intro, again, of complex topics or tracks inside of a website. So you can say a lot more in a 30-second video than you could through a series of online posts. So if you haven't considered that yet, I would also consider or encourage you to check out video as an option for that. As far as what you need to create in video, I would encourage you to look at the length and the content of the video that you're creating. Here are some basic guidelines on how long any given video should be. First, as far as content, make sure that you keep your video short and think visually with what you're doing. There's nothing more boring than just seeing someone talk. If that's all you're going to do, you may as well just have a blog post or publish a podcast. But for general notes, a homepage intro, something that you're going to have on your website to introduce your products or services, shoot for around 30 or 45 seconds. Definitely keep it under a minute if possible. The key is you're going to want to go longer, but trim it back and realize, think about what it would take or what people will be interested in. You know, there's a reason that advertising on TV is 30 seconds or at a max 60 seconds for TV ads. You can present that and the good news is that if you watch TV at all you probably have a really good idea of the format of a successful video teaser or trailer. So keep it short, keep it simple, tell folks what they need to care about and get on with your day. You know, it doesn't have to be overly crazy or too animated or, in, or incredible. Again, look at effective advertising on TV as examples of those intros to products, services, and your company. If you have a basic tutorial or a demo that you'd like to show, again, think about who is going to be browsing this video and keep it, again, as short as possible. Two to three minutes is the outside of a demo. People want to have small tidbits of information on the website and I'll show you how that looks in a, in a couple of minutes as I give you our demo but for example BusyWeb has an entire library of WordPress demos and trainings and all of those are under two minutes long so if you need to learn how to create a poster a page in WordPress you can go to our video library and click that 
Now notice that I have an entire library of content that covers that. I don't just limit everything that I'm trying to do to that one two minute or less video. Instead I've broken up the videos into easy, di easy to digest bits of content. So different folks will want different things. You want to be sure to offer them that ability and let them self-select into the video that you're trying to reach. If you have training on a complex topic, 30 to 45 minutes is probably the outside of that connection. You know, think of it as a enabled webinar or the busy web busy webinars are all around 30 to 45 minutes in length. That's about as long as anyone can sit down over lunch or over a bit of spare time before they start wandering and before things just don't make sense anymore for folks. So think about what that is and again think about how we are already wired. If people aren't able to digest that nobody's going to sit down for a three hour video and like, likewise if you have 14 different topics that you're trying to cover inside of your webinar or inside of any content that you're delivering it's probably going to be best to break those videos into separate smaller topics create a playlist in YouTube and let that cover your information be sure to edit your video and add transitions labels and banners you know make it look good so that people understand what you're trying to convey one nice part about YouTube in particular is that you get to choose your cover frame and now finally in about the last year year and a half you've been able to change the the key slide to whatever you want so if you have a video that you've uploaded to YouTube it's very easy to either pick from the three options that they give you on the fly or if you want to load up your own demo or your own title slide that's going to show up when people have an embedded or when people embed your video or when they're seeing it on on social networks or whatever you can see that and then you get to get it to say exactly what you're looking for so look at that connect out and make sure that you're reaching out in a progressive way with only the information that people are actually going to need just because you can shoot for a long time with your video doesn't mean that you should shoot forever and keep it going for too long so how about equipment uh, here's the here's where things get really cool you used to have a you used to have to have a very expensive video camera in order to shoot decent video now we're all carrying high definition HD video devices in our pockets an iPhone or an Android device is actually capable of shooting some pretty amazing video can shoot slow-mo can shoot all kinds of crazy stuff and so we have amazing devices in our pockets now the key thing is to use those amateur level devices in a professional way so make sure that you have great light and I'll talk and talk more about light in a second make sure that you also have great audio and that you're using a quality device because if you're shooting with your iPhone and it's windy outside and you're a long ways away it's going to be clear that you just aren't professional in your video and it's not going to convey the message that you're trying to do that said if you're looking for lighting let, let me go through each of the three actually for making sure that your video is still and not shaky you know make sure to use a tripod there are neat little tripods that you can buy for five or six bucks on Amazon that just screw right into the top of a standard tripod or there's gorilla pod mounts like the one that I've that I'm showing here that you can simply use they grab on automatically to your phone and publishes that info or and, and posts that lets you get clamped right on to your website or to your phone um, for lighting you know having a couple of extra lamps is really good if you're shooting at a desk the idea is you want to have at least one light source but if you have a very strong light source that's too close to you if you're shooting at your desk you're going to appear washed out or very bright so if you if you can get more than one light source perhaps one behind the subject maybe one off to the side to kind of soften up some of your features as you're talking that's a much better use of the light that's available than just posting up one big bright light one thing that I really like to do is shoot video next to and facing a window not facing into a window but using the video or using the the window behind your head 
in order to, or actually in behind the camera, in order to illuminate your face with natural light. That comes pre-configured to be diffuse and nice. You don't want to be directly in the sunshine if you can avoid it, but having a nice bright light source that shoots diffuse light all over is a great way to make sure that your video looks good. So, you know, again, shoot with the lighting source, at least the main lighting source behind the camera so that you're not having problems with underexposure. Make sure you do have plenty of light so that your video doesn't appear grainy or dark. And for a pro tip, make sure that you add one extra light source. So put another source of light kind of at the side of your face just off camera or maybe something behind you if you wanted to fill in. If you want to shoot in front of a video, in front of a window, with the window behind you, you're going to need to have a very strong front light to even out the exposure on that video. So make sure that you're taking advantage of that. Secondly, on audio, you know this is one of those things that's just incredibly easy to get wrong, but even easier to get right. If you just get a again five or six dollar lavalier mic that you can plug into your iPhone's um, headphone jack that is going to make a tremendous difference in the audio quality of your video. You know, even in podcasting, I learned this when I was doing a number of things for, the lo for a local radio station. If you don't have the mic close enough to your face, even if you have a very expensive piece of equipment, if it's too far away from you, you're going to get a lot of echo. And so as you're looking at that, make sure that you get that microphone very close to your face, as close as possible, and keep out of echoey kind of chambers. I know that the busy webinars tend to be a little bit echoey, but I have a great podcasting mic, and I keep the mic less than a foot away from my, from my mouth so that I don't get too echoey. And you can definitely tell if you move across the room or if you move the microphone further away. It just picks up more ambient noise, and so you're going to sound echoey and weird. So think about that and make sure that you're getting as much storytelling into your video as possible by adding either a background or thinking about the surroundings. You, know, you probably don't want to shoot right in front of the bathroom door, for example, or if you're shooting in your home office, you know, don't have the bed in your, in your room in the background. Uh, make sure that you tidy up the location that you're going to be doing your video from and just connect out because people are going to be able to see all that stuff so you need to think about it. So very simple, very easy and you know the cool thing about all of this is that if you just search on YouTube for corporate video tips or professional video shooting tips there's lots of information out there. So when do you need to go to a professional? You know, there's some things that you can do and actually software is making this much easier. You can use you know, small, small inexpensive tools on Macs or PCs to edit video, but if you really want to tell an effective story, and especially if you need to use like well done green screen, so if you want to present your, if you want to talk on a video or have, have someone speak on a video and have video from different spaces show up behind you, you're going to want to have green screen and that generally takes a professional. If it doesn't take a professional, it takes professional level equipment or certainly more expensive software than what a casual um, video creation person is going to use. If you need really great pro quality audio and video, if you need depth of field, if you need things that are just a little bit artistic or that just need to be perfect, you know, take the time, take the expense, and hire somebody that knows what they're doing. There's a reason that there's all kinds of things out there that are helpful, or there's, there's a reason that people pay for videos, and that's if they need them to look really, really good. You, know, you don't need to have an absolutely perfect video to, be, to have it be effective, but if you need to present, you know, especially on the home page of your website and for the first thing people are going to see or experience with your company, take the time to get it done well and to get it done right. Quality animations, titles and transitions, you know, all of that is technically doable by the amateur, but there are just a lot more tools, a lot better tools, and you're going to spend a lot less time if you work with a professional from the outset. 
So a professional will keep you from the natural inclination to use as many toys as possible in your new video editing suite. If you can do swipes, cross, cross dissolves, rolls and pinwheels on your video cuts, that's awfully tempting to do, but it looks absolutely crazy. And so people can easily get caught up in the toy aspect of their video creation suite and wind up with a video that's just not effective. So if you need it to look great and look professional, a, a professional is actually a great way to go. As well as, and in particular, storytelling <clears throat> and delivering complex projects. So if you have something that requires a story to be told or a narrative to be conveyed, something that has no, numerous steps or things that you need to create and connect with, you know, there are things that professionals will do that you won't think about. You know, with professional level video, you're going to get multiple cuts or multiple angles of video. You'll see you'll see different tricks that they'll do. So they'll have two or three cameras on you, and they'll shoot different angles to keep the interest going. If they're shooting an interview with you, if you're shooting an actual conversational interview, you'll probably see the interviewer and the interviewee in separate separate panes. Um, so using that kind of stuff and doing that, you, know, you can technically do all of this yourself and have it look decent, but really think about hiring a professional if you haven't or if you don't have the time to learn it right or if you just really need it to be perfect. You're going to pay a little bit for it, but you'd be amazed at how little quality video can actually cost. Um, I've been demoing throughout this event um, some of my fun or favorite um, professional video level um, folks, clients of ours include iDream.tv and RealMcCoy.com. I prefer and um, and recommend those folks all the time. And BusyWeb actually has a number of other partners that all specialize in different kinds of video. So if you're interested or if you're looking, that's a great way to connect up. Just ask us via the questions and answers tool on what to do. Once you get your video created, it's actually very easy to embed it in your website. All you need to do in WordPress 4.0 is simply paste the URL for your website or for your video into YouTube. So at the top, when you're clicking on your video um, window, you'll notice that there's a URL, so it says youtube.com slash and then a bunch of gobbledygook. If you copy that in there, you'll be able to quickly and easily embed a video player into your website that doesn't require all of that crazy embed code. So you can still do an embed code if you want to have a little bit more control over exactly what the video is going to look like. But really, 85-90% of what you need is available now inside of WordPress with the simple copy and paste of the URL of that video. It's very, very slick, and I'll demo that in just a minute. Finally, you're going to want to look at your YouTube channel as well. So. YouTube is by far the big deliverer of video. There are a lot of other places, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But you know, you can if you if you really want to get your word out on your videos and have professional level content that doesn't necessarily swamp your website or <clears throat> kill your bandwidth by loading large videos onto your site, YouTube is a fantastic option for you. So in order to go to or in order to get your YouTube channel set up. All you really need to do is create your Google account or use your Google account, log in, and then go to YouTube.com and select Create Channel. So your YouTube channel is the uh, same thing as a Facebook page or a Twitter account. It's your place on YouTube to post your content. So you'll be posting new videos and you just go to Post New Video. If you use Google Hangouts or Google Hangouts on Air like BusyWeb does every week, um, it's a simple one-click process to register your YouTube or your YouTube channel with your Google Plus business account. And then you can host Hangouts on Air. And for example, as soon as I click the Stop Broadcast button on this webinar, it's going to be published as a YouTube video. And we have you know, 130 of these videos out there. These are all very easy, very slick. They work just fine. They're great trainings, and I love using them. Um, it's easy to customize your Google or your YouTube page on Google with a custom um, profile ID. You can have a custom avatar 
or um, logo on your website. The trick with the logo is that it has to be the same one as your YouTube or as your Google Plus page. And so you'll note that BusyWeb's channel, and I'll demo this in a moment, actually is our Google Plus because it's a Google Plus account. Could just as easily um, YouTubeify it, but you have to pick one and it goes out on all of them. For your YouTube um, channel header, it's going to display in a number of different ways. So this little graphic that's embedded on the site actually shows the common sizes. The key thing to note is that you want the main subject of your image, of your header image, to be right in the middle of that image. So you can po post up a 2560 by 1440 video or, or image to that page. For desktops, it's 2560 by 423. For a tablet, it's going to be 1255 by 423. And for the logo safe area for the stuff that's going to show up in mobile devices, it's 1546 by 423. So as you look at all of this, just keep in mind this darkest area is where the most important stuff is going to go. So, and you know, unfortunately YouTube, or yeah, YouTube has changed this once in a while, like every few months where it kind of gets tweaked. So just keep looking at your YouTube account. And the other good thing is all of this information is readily available when you're setting up your YouTube page. And it shows you in easy to navigate HTML5 kind of demo. And so it's hard to go wrong as long as you have the access to tweak and fiddle with your imagery. For search engine optimization, you know, this is one of the big keys of having YouTube videos on your website. Google Plus, or Google is the biggest search engine by far, of course, but the number two search engine, so surprisingly, is actually YouTube. So adding information, including keywords and descriptive titles, to the videos that you load onto YouTube and embedding those videos on your website is a great way to enhance your search engine optimization in both places. So posting up your content, making sure you go in after you publish your video, after you post your video, and adding keywords and tags that relate to the content that you're including is a great way to get better results online. You can also share your videos via a bunch of other tools. You know, all of this stuff, you can actually share back and forth between YouTube usually. But if you're shooting a video and you'd like to embed it on Instagram, which is great for social sharing, if you're looking for the Facebook crowd or some of the more savvy millennials, you can use um, Instagram and post up on there. One nice thing about Instagram is that you have filters and you can do just a little bit, it's, it's a little bit more social and a little bit more geared toward quick, incredibly quick snippets that are interesting and fun. Facebook, you can embed videos in your timelines, and the nice part about Facebook videos is that they actually auto-play as people are scrolling in their timelines, both on mobile and on the web, or on PCs. So think about your video and make sure that you get right to the interesting part at the beginning of your video in order for people to actually want to watch it or click on it to hear what you're saying. So look at that and make sure that you've got that interesting. With Twitter, you can embed videos in your tweets if you publish or if you tweet a YouTube video or if you're in your Twitter um, client on your Android or iOS device. If you simply load a video up, it's going to load it right into the Twitter account. It'll show up with a little URL, but once you're viewing that either on the web or on a Twitter client, the video will appear embedded and then people can see on the side of your Twitter account the embedded videos that you've already posted to Twitter, which is really cool. Um, Instagram is owned by Facebook, and similarly, Vine is owned by Twitter. With Vine, it's a short loop video that they, that they create, so think of it about six or seven seconds that you get um, in that video. You do have audio and video that you can use inside of Vine, but it loops. So there's a lot of incredibly creative things that are happening on Vine right now. So if you haven't had a chance to check it out, you know, go ahead and uh, go to Vine.com and look around. You're going to have to sign up, and you're going to have to download a um, mobile device 
application of some sort in order to fully use Vine, but um, it can be really cool. And if you have something compelling to say in very short snippets, um, Vine is a great way to go. That said, let's go right into more comments. This is your chance to ask questions. Again, if you haven't logged in and um, submitted any questions, just simply go to the YouTube page for the Google Plus Hangout. So, you know, right from inside of here, if you go to google.com slash plusbusyweb and click on the Q&A button on the video like I did at the beginning, you can absolutely ask questions just by clicking in the Ask a New Question button. Um, otherwise, you can go ahead and send us an email as a question, or you can just connect up with us by going back to the actual post and joining us live on the Hangout because in just a few minutes after we're done with the demo portion of this event, you'll be able to hang out with us and ask us any questions you want about anything in online marketing. So click on this button, on this link if you'd like to join us that way. Let's get into the actual editing of your YouTube channel. So this is BusyWeb's channel. It's at youtube.com slash busywebcom. Um, interestingly enough, over the years I've had so many accounts that um, BusyWeb has taken, but it's taken by me and I just can't figure out how to get it back. So we have BusyWebcom and BusyWebVids as um, the repositories for our Busy Webinars. Prior to Busy Webinars, they were called Buzz Builders um, events. But um, all of those are available on here. So as you go to the home page of your account, you can, I should view this as the public can see it, um, you get the chance to do all kinds of fun things. So you can see what these links are. So you can see our videos. Um, videos like this is showing up as live right now because it's a Hangout on Air. And you can see all of our other content inside of here. You can browse playlists on side of here, so curating your videos is pretty cool and um, allows you to really dig in. And you know the different channels that you highlight or that you connect with, you can feature or connect out as necessary. So this is your all-in-one space to hang out and to connect with the people that are watching and interested in your in your company. Um, I did mention on here that. Um, you can edit and modify your content. So if I switch over to the busy web page so I can go into the Creator Studio and edit this, um, you can see it on how this works. And so if I refresh now, I'm in the video, and I can edit this link. Click on Done. And now I can go in, and there's a little Edit button that pops up if I, uh, if I hover over the cover photo, and if I click on that, I get a chance to either edit link or edit channel art. You'll notice that there's a few links on here. You can go to the Busy Web Events page, um, our Google Plus page, our Twitter account, or the webinar archive page for us. And so if I wanted to edit that, I can also edit my channel art. And in order to do that, it tells me right on here that my recommended size is 2560 by 1440. And if I select a photo from my computer, it'll give me the options for resizing that photo. If I go to My Photos, I can just go back in here, YouTube, Channel, Art. If I click this, this is going to show me what's available. And if I click on this, it's going to tell me what it's going to look like on these three different sections. And again, I can go in and I can adjust the crop on this image by kind of sh shrinking it up or moving it around. So this is where most of the content is going to show up and this is that highlight section that you want to be sure that you're being careful of but again it gives you exactly what you need on this page in order to have a great looking cover photo so I'm going to cancel this of course because I've already done it and that's what this looks like on the desktop now if I was viewing this on, the, on a TV it would be the much bigger version if I was viewing it on a mobile device you already saw what that demo looked like the other things to think about is once you get into your videos, you can actually edit those videos using your video manager. And right now this is live, uh, or building a content library is an older video, so I can edit that. When I go in to edit my videos, I can click on it, and I'm not going to um, preview that because you don't need to hear me again, but I can go into the info and settings space, 
and I can edit the custom thumbnail and or I can edit the thumbnail these are the three that YouTube gives me by default or I can create a custom one and upload my own if I have this is where to add in your content or the description and title for your video and then you can add tags to your event or to your YouTube video by just simply typing different tags in here so um, web content um, we'll just hit enter on web content and web design and web development and that's some of the other stuff that I get into so content website category or library industry I can add those things and, and YouTube is actually proactively sharing that with me um, I would save changes then you gotta make sure that your video is public and then you can also give it a few other details and notes now if you started your video and things didn't work out exactly as you liked or if you realize that it's too long and you want to cut it in different pieces you can actually go into enhancements and you can edit the length and the details on your on your site so there's a trim button in here and you can trim out parts of your video on here you can set it to go slow motion you can adjust the color temperature if you didn't follow my if you didn't follow my um, my recommendation and you didn't use a tripod you can stabilize that video and uh, have it look a lot better so there's all kinds of cool things that you can do inside of here in order to work the way you need it to you can actually add audio and annotations inside of here but that's getting a little bit techy and overly geeky and so I won't go too much into that right now once you get that and once you go back to your video um, I am going to just go back and then from my page I can actually go inside of here and there's this little share thing inside of here if I click on this you can embed a video using the embed code and if you go into the embed code and click show more you can actually edit the different sizes of your embedded video you can uncheck or check show select suggested video when the video finishes for most of my clients you're not going to want to have this button clicked because YouTube is going to search out and look for videos that it thinks relate to your company or your video and you'll probably be surprised at the content that does show up there um, best case it's a competitor of yours or something that's completely unrelated to your company worst case it might be something relatively offensive that you're going to want to have removed from your video share as soon as possible so as a general rule I always unclick this you can unclick show player controls or un unclick show title and player actions or enable a privacy enhanced mode in order to have a little bit less stuff show up and just make sure that people can't share it all over the place but again we're probably going for content that we want to share so including that is fine now the other thing inside of this share button is this is that YouTube URL that I was mentioning before and if I paste this into my WordPress website your WordPress is automatically going to create a video browser inside of this page so that starts super clip super quick and super cool and I can actually select where I want it to start at right from here and so if I click this you notice that it's going to do a question mark and a T equals 1 S if I wanted to change that to 10 seconds in you'll notice that it changes it to 10 S <clears throat> so that's a little trick on how to start your video a little later than not um, I'm actually not going to do that but you know that's uploading a video in a nutshell you know, if you're doing something with your video and you don't necessarily want it to show up everywhere you can actually set it to either unlisted or private with private videos they cannot be embedded on websites so most of the videos that I have for not quite public consumption are just listed as unlisted so that no one can find them they don't show up in search results and they don't show up on my channel unless they're me or unless I'm me but I can embed them on my clients websites and so for example we have 
some training videos on how to update um, content on websites. It's not ever um, content that can't be shared publicly because anytime you publish something on YouTube, you should assume that it can be repurposed and used for nefarious purposes. So don't ever show any passwords or any you know interesting details of your videos when you publish things. Um, but you know you can set it to unlisted or private if necessary as well. That said, you know that's pretty much an overview. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to share is how easy it is to set up a video library. And so on my video manager, I can click on videos. You can click a checkbox, or you can click the checkboxes in front of them, and then I can select actions. But the one that I want to do right here is click add to, and a list of my existing playlists shows up, or I can simply create a new playlist. Now when you create a new playlist, you can actually select to have that playlist be public, unlisted, or private, and that allows you to, of course if I set it as unlisted, no one can see it except for you or the people that you've explicitly shared that video with. You can embed it on a website, but if it's listed as private, you cannot embed that video on a website, and it only shows up in YouTube, and only if you've explicitly shared in that video with someone. So you need to go to the share and click email, or click you know some other link in order to share it, and then people can see that, but only by the person can they see that video if you click it as private. So that's how to handle that. And then once you get into your channel, of course, you can see and people can browse those. So you can look at analytics, you can check out your community, you can go into channel details here, and you can see the upload defaults um, and some other advanced and enhanced things. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of things that you can do with video. But, you know, in general, let's walk before we run. And so just start playing around with this and give it a shot. Finally, as we close out, I wanted to remind folks that there's a few things to consider. One thing, of course, is that BusyWeb is an online marketing company agency that does web design very, very brilliantly. We'll create a website for you that will automatically cross-post and publish your content across all of the social networks that you need and integrate into all aspects of online marketing including and especially email marketing. We are a constant contact provider and have been developing and creating fantastic programs for our clients for quite a while now. We also do the best dang web hosting for WordPress powered websites out there and for you know as little as 300 bucks a month or 25 or 300 bucks a year, 25 a month, we can get you out there and actively monitor, maintain and help you with your website. And that's something that no one else really does. And finally, we have a fantastic suite of online marketing tools to help you promote your business, enhance your search engine optimization, get more leads into your business, or deepen your relationships with your existing customers. We have programs around all four of those types of integration or connection, and each of those is developed to do exactly what you need in the areas of online advertising, content marketing, search engine optimization, and email marketing and newsletters. Remember to join us every Wednesday. We've got a lot of cool content coming up. Next week we're going to be talking about mobile and go to busyweb.com slash events to see what we've got coming up in the next month. We've got a lot of cool things coming up. The last two weeks of the year are going to be off because they happen to fall on our Christmas and New Year's happen to fall on Wednesdays and so um, we're going to be going into just a few things including my wrap-up of 2014 and what's been the big stuff that's happened over the past couple of months. And uh, next week, the day before Thanksgiving, however, we're going to be talking about mobile tips, how to succeed and post on your website using mobile-friendly tactics. Finally, if you'd like to have more information and uh, know more about what you're doing right and wrong online, talk to us about a buzz report. If you go to busyweb.com slash buzz, we'll get you all the info you need quickly and easily, and you'll walk away with a report that outlines your next steps to get you the results that you need. This is free to busy webinar attendees, so please do mention that when you register, but uh, go to busyweb.com slash buzz. Again, I am Dave Meyer with BusyWeb. Can't wait to talk to you in, uh, next week, but uh, until then, thanks very much and have a fantastic few days. Again, I'm Dave Meyer with BusyWeb, helping you generate buzz without getting stung.
Bye.